Hello, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of Tissues of the Day. I'm your host, David. I'm joined today by my co-host, Robert Mackay. And we have a special guest today. Yay! Hello! A big, warm welcome to Renee Mock. Hello, I'm Renee. Did I say that right? Yes, Renee Mack. Uh, Mack. Okay, he cool. just made Mack. it very French sounding. He's he like, Mock. <laughs> Renee Le Renee Mack. Renee Mack. Oh, well, Mack. I mean, Le Big Mack. The first name is French, but I'm not French. Oh. Mm, fair. Uh, you can tell. Is, for, forgive me, but is Renee on your birth certificate or was that like a, uh, a second name kind of thing? It is on my birth certificate. Uh, it's an nice. anglicized version of my Chinese name, but it is my official name. So my Chinese awesome. name is Wing Lei. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah. Do you go by that if you ever visit China or do you prefer no, people call you Renee? I, they just okay. call me Renee. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Wait, okay. I actually don't know that much about this. Um, how does that work then? Like, because, so does anybody call you Wing Lei? Yeah, my family. Well, my family calls me Lei, which is mm -hmm. like a short word, a short version of that. And then uh, they call me Renee sometimes, but it's more when my family moves here, they gave us Chinese names, but then just to get us more acclimated and not bullied essentially they gave us yeah. uh, english names and and those are our official names my sister's middle name is wanky and then they chose not to give me a middle name <laughs> <laughs> i know right Oof. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait is that the chinese name or is that like a nickname no that's her chinese name is wing k and then the anglicized like when they wrote it down it's wanky so her her official middle name is wanky so you can imagine growing Oof. up when they're like kate wanky mac Come to the office. Oh. <laughs> oh. Right? So he didn't get yeah, getting rough. sent to the, to the office for wanking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they wow. they chose not to give me one um, because they didn't want me to be bullied. <laughs> so, That's fair. Yeah. It's too bad um, your sister was like the, the lesson, right? Like the first was like, we learned from her. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to correct the mistake. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh. My parents uh, made the choice of trying to pick us names, me and my like younger siblings, pick us names that sounded similar or had like an easy translation between Spanish and French. Mm. So I got David. My sister got Victoria, which like becomes Vitoria in Spanish. And my brother got Alex, which becomes Alejandro. Alejandro. So I grew up being called David mostly. Mm. And then once I started going mm. to schools, they were calling me david and david and david and i was like okay i guess i guess i'm david yeah. but everyone like i started living with family again recently and every once in a while they'll call me david and i'm like who huh because <laughs> it's just like just another life but i've been looking at like old home videos and i was like a little baby and everyone's just saying david, david. which hmm. seems oh. like a different name <laughs> but yeah. yeah i like it more actually it's it's it sounds more exotic I hope so. Yeah, whereas uh, mine is as white as can yeah. be. I am like extremely Scottish sounding. I'm Robert Fraser McKay. <laughs> and okay, wait, Robert, you often get people mispronouncing your name, right? Your last, your last name? name? Yes. Mackie, so, normally. Yeah, uh, what's that about? <laughs> It's, it's the spelling. And honestly, like, um, I remember going to Scotland, seeing a bunch of the different spellings of Mackay, and it's like uh -huh. M-A-C-K-Y, M-A-C-K- I M A C K M A C K I E M A C K E Y E. Like there's there were so many different spellings because they're different like I guess derivatives of the clan. Um a clan like the family name and that. Okay. And this here's a funny little fact. So my entire life growing up, my dad, he was really big on our like Scottish heritage. He researched it, we figured out our coat of arms and our tavern and all that stuff. And we ha he had always known that our family name was associated to Robert the Bruce, which was like, we're talking Braveheart, Mel Gibson, the like Highland people who fought against the English to defend the Scottish, right? So it was like very okay. honorable in that. Um, but then when we went to Scotland and we went to one of those like um, uh, places where basically you learn about your heritage and lineage and that and your name, the guy there was like, oh, he's like, actually... Your your last name was associated with the lowland people, not the highland people who supported Robert the Bruce. You probably supported the English. <laughs> My dad's like, oh. we're leaving. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> it just destroyed years of, like, you know, history and what we understood. Uh, like, I'll never know the real tale that is true, but... Is yeah, funny. no kidding. Um, after we do, like, this first little segment, I just want to come back to 
um, that idea because my brother was talking to me about a show that was doing like genealogies and people's heritage, but we'll come back to it, I think. Okay. Um, so Renee, yeah. our special guest, can we put you in the hot seat? You can put me in the hot seat. Okay, so we're gonna yeah. ask some quick questions. Try to give as short an answer as you can. We're not gonna do any commentary. We're just gonna go through a bunch. They'll start pretty easy and then they might get a little more difficult. Are you ready? Okay. And we'll, we'll ping back and forth between David and I. I'll kick it off. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, ready for that? I guess I'm Race ready. Raise the table, plant your feet, breathe deeply. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all three of them. Uh, pie or cake? Pie. Cake. Oh. <laughs> are you are you a listener or a talker? Talker. Cupcake or cup of tea? Cupcake. Nights in or nights out? Nights out. Short partners or tall partners? Tall partners. Sorry. In bed, in bed, do you spend more time uptown or downtown? Uh, downtown. <laughs> Last thing you ate? Downtown. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, ch chocolate croissant, chocolate croissant. <laughs> oh, that's, th those things just got combined and it was weird in my head. Um, <laughs> what is one of your first thoughts upon waking up? I go back to sleep. <laughs> mm. Slap someone or punch someone? Slap someone. Mm. Um, if you could silence your inner critic about one thing, what would it be? I am good enough. Uh, sweet or savory? Sweet. Mm. If smartphones disappeared tomorrow, would you be okay? I would be okay. Driver or passenger? Driver. Ooh. <laughs> and what is something that made you smile today? I went to this little French cafe that I really love by my place, and I got two pastries because I'm a fat piggy. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, oh, no. um, amazing. Okay, now let's take all that away, David. I want you to mm -hmm. use those answers to interpolate what you think Renee is because I know her too well, and I could tell you exactly based off those answers. What do you mean, what she is? Like based off of how she answered, how how would you like how would you describe Renee? How would I describe Renee? <laughs> um, okay, We're in the hot seat let's now, see, baby. Let's see. Okay, so it sounds like Renee is very driven, possibly a Virgo. Um, maybe Renee uh, seems very sociable uh, and isn't afraid of asking for what she wants. How does how does that sound? Pretty, pretty accurate, though I'm a Libra. <laughs> so, ah, yeah. oh, I mix those up all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I love to Virgo, though, so I don't know if that counts for anything. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to throw in a couple of facts into that because I have an inside job. I would say also creative, mm. strong, driving, hence being a driver, but likes to be submissive. Hence the downtown. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 okay oh so is it a deal breaker if um if a, a guy does not go down <laughs> on okay <people? laughs> so um this is actually new to me uh it is a deal breaker for me now as of this mm -hmm. year because i actually experienced people who were really good at it and it completely just like blew my mind and changed my world and i'm like oh my god this is what i've been missing for god knows how long how many years so many years so, yeah 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 i was i was uh with a guy who was like i don't eat ass and i was like <sighs> cut him out. <laughs> it's just like wait no cut it just doesn't him. work for me <laughs> i like it no. too much giving no. and receiving so i'm just like <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like reciprocity. <laughs> it's very um, important. <laughs> I, ha I haven't eaten an ass yet, um, but I mm. enjoy mine being eaten. Yeah, You're but like out. the thing is, eating a straight guy's ass, I don't know if I could do right? that either. <laughs> I, like, they just aren't as like clean. <laughs> no, oh, yeah, 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 no. Like, if, yeah. if they've done the work, I'm all for it. I don't care. Yeah, if yeah, yeah. Straight or not. <laughs> oh, no, for sure. Well, like... Yeah, 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 I get that. But it's it's just like, 
Yeah, if it's unkempt, gotta help the outcasts. <laughs> like, it's really not gonna. <laughs> like, There's no saving. Unkempt, unkempt, because I got this combination of, like, kept and hemp. So it's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. like a hippie's butt. I don't know. Oh, I just had a really <laughs> yeah, yeah. terrible just visual. With, <laughs> yeah, with braided ass hairs. Oh, no. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, no. Go to it's the like, next what? I do take maybe. care of it. <laughs> next. Next. <laughs> um. So, okay, so after the quick questions, sort of leading into our more, like, topical questions, there was something um, my brother was telling me about regarding heritage, and this might tie a bit into travel, which is our theme for today's episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Throw in a sound effect of, like, ding yeah. <laughs> that, that one right there. That, yeah, yeah, that yeah, one yeah. sounded like Record a it. banjo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A drunk banjo. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So my brother was talking about this show that studies people's genealogies and it was looking at um, they had a black guest on the show who was trying to learn about like where they came from. And there was a very interesting phenomenon of like if they had a mixed heritage versus like a totally African heritage, there was like this kind of frustration at -hmm. having a mix and like not being like originally African. I just thought that was very interesting because like I don't know, to, like I'm mixed race, so like racial purity I've always found very confusing and like um, not necessarily sad, but it just seems like we do ourselves a disservice to think it's a thing. And I'm reading mm-hmm. like, I'm reading Cast by Isabel Wilkerson, which is all about this idea and how race is like a, it's like a social construct. Like it's really just mm-hmm. based on these like stereotypes um, that people are identifying races. Like pretty much everyone has a mixed ethnicity um and uh yeah i'm just curious what uh your folks thoughts is on that (laughs) i i actually listened to this ted talk recently about how race is a construct that's tied to economies and Mm, economies uh, economies. so it's kind of like slavery was necessary back in the day because we just simply didn't have the technology to be able to do a lot of the work. And so slavery became a thing and it was justified by creating race as a construct that it was okay to enslave people because they are less than in order to support the economic goals that the people are trying to achieve. And then now that uh, we have technology, say in, you know, like farming, farming equipment, you used to have farm hands who, you know, still, we do still have farm hands who do come from other countries. So I think there's still a layer of this going on. Um, but yeah, it was just a really interesting TED talk about how it is a social construct and it's tightly tied to to power and economics. That's really interesting. There's a really good yeah. point on that because like when you think about it, um, by having them othered, right? Having a, being a different race, something that you aren't, they become a, I don't want to say commodity, but like a tool to yes. utilize for the gains of that other race, that, yeah. you know, the, the ones that aren't them. And so that's that's really interesting concept, concept because it, it ultimately goes back to like power and it, gaining something you don't have. Yeah. So it's almost like the race is a side note. But it's more about what you're trying to achieve because humans are innately greedy and they want what they don't want or don't have. Race is an, I mean, I think race is, it's constructed to help yourself go to sleep better to make these choices such as slavery because, you know, you want to achieve these goals, you want to have this power. And it's all driven by greed. But at the end of the day, you're still a human and you still might not feel good about harming another human. But if you can justify in some way, then it helps you go to sleep at night. Yes, David, I just added this as a topic to our list. <laughs> obviously yeah. very interesting. Yeah. We might have to have Renee back. No, it, it's, a, it's a deep one because, um, yeah, this book cast is pretty incredible. It's, I think, the Pulitzer Prize winner. Pulitzer Prize winner, excuse me. <laughs> Said Pulit, it wrong. Pulit, Pulit, um, Pulit, Pulit, Pulit. It's Pulitzer, one hundred percent. I've yeah. Anyway, Pulit. um, and uh, yeah, the, like she makes this distinction between um a caste society versus like a, a racial society, and caste is that exact idea of there being like this economic difference between mm-hmm. all these people because of the construct of race. But race is all about the stereotypes cast is about that sense of power and like Mm. who's in control um and she makes a really really interesting uh comparison to india and how much they're in a caste system and how they're like a really large democracy um but they struggle and people who live within this caste system end up carrying that 
forward in their life. So anyway, big topic. Wow. Um, speaking Hold of on. India, travel. Wait. Sorry, what? <laughs> I didn't make my big intelligent <laughs> oh, tell comment me. on race. <laughs> Tell me. Smart this episode, so I'm gonna have to put on my glasses. <laughs> and you instantly became smarter. Yeah, Whoa. I know. Yeah. Race is something that we run. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I'll leave that to you, white man. <laughs> yeah, see, I have no I have no claim to this topic. I cannot say anything other than I'm sorry. That's what I'm allowed to say to white man. <laughs> nah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Um so yeah, so so full transition. This is the segue. Brrr, travel. Super smooth. Yeah. Excellent segue, David. Small man. car that transitions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my little jalopy starting up without falling apart. Um, so, Renee, what was one of the best trips you've taken in your life, travel-wise? Ah, uh, so it, it's it's interesting because it touches on one of the the quick questions you asked about mm-hmm. if I could survive without a smartphone, and I could because one of the best trips I ever took in my life was I was around. 20 or 21, I can't even remember. I went to South America and I spent four months there. Uh, and then I traveled around Bolivia and Peru with my sister without a smartphone. And we just had mm. like a lonely planet, South America on a shoestring <laughs> book. And mm. we, and it's like we would use internet cafes and then pay phones <gasps> <laughs> to call hostels to see if there's vacancy. That's amazing. In Spanish. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely feel comfortable being able to survive without a smartphone because I survived South America without a smartphone. And, yeah, there are a lot of crazy incidents. I survived a fire in that trip. So. Okay. All yeah. right. Everything <laughs> is on hold. We're already flaming. So tell until us. Until I hear there. that story. I need to hear that story from the beginning. <laughs> so, um, so we were in Salar de Uni in Bolivia, which is the like the largest salt flats in the world. And it's, it's pretty much a desert of salt and there's very little uh, services and even if you have all the money in the world it doesn't matter you're staying the exact same shithole as everyone else because that's mm. that's what's available and we were on a small tour um, so the way that you can go to Salar you usually join small tours in a 4 by 4 car because the terrain is so rocky so we were in a small tour with like these, this German couple and all of the tours congregate in this one accommodation, which literally were just, it's just like a room with like feed sacks on the floor and then just mm-hmm. sheets. And I remember I peeled back my sheet and there were tissues in the feed sack. And I was like, oh, these haven't been cleaned. So, so you just sleep with all your clothes on because like nothing is clean. Um, mm-hmm. Anyway, we were all in the kitchen and the way that cooking is done is they actually bring the propane tanks with them and each little small tour, like they cook for kind of the the party that they have, but there was a, there was a leak in one of the propane tanks and we were just sitting in the dining area and we just hear this boom and then just flames come out of the kitchen and like people fly out of the kitchen and it's just, it's pandemonium. I, for some reason, was wearing socks and sandals, and then I... Oh, no. Faux number one. <laughs> Faux number one. So my sister and I were running out of this place, and I lose my sandals in the process because I'm wearing socks and sandals. Uh, so I'm just, like, running around in socks, and then... Um, the family that actually runs this accommodation, they have their own separate living area just really close by. So they they see the flames and then the woman, she runs out and she's like, que pasa, que pasa. And then I say to her, I had inferno, which means there's hell. <laughs> or I meant wow. to say, I meant wow. to say there's a fire. I yeah, fuego. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fuego. But I was like, I had inferno. And then, Oh yeah. So, so you basically probably said to this very religious woman <laughs> that like the hell mouth just opened <laughs> and is like all hell is coming onto earth, yeah, yeah, and she yeah. probably yeah. lost her shit. She just like she yeah. can just imagine she sees her her business essentially in on fire, and then all of these people running, and then this like random ch- two Chinese girls just running towards her and I'm like there's hell there's hell <laughs> so, yeah. oh my god 
<laughs> and she's like, she's like, I always knew the devil would be a Chinese woman. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's actually the secret. Is a, the devil's oh, a Chinese woman? Never. Oh. The Bible got it wrong. So. Yeah. That's, yeah. That is insane. So. Did the fire department arrive? So they managed to actually put it out. Um, the I, I'm like, I don't know if this happens often, but just the, the reaction time and knowing what to do was so fast. And I think it's just like, there's so much stuff that happens in South America. It's such a wild place to travel, um, especially, you know, I went 10 years ago. I'm sure it's very different now. Uh, but the all of the people in the different tours, they, they acted really quickly. They drove the cars with the more propane tanks on the top away from the fire just in case it reached that point, then it's going to get out of hand. And then they managed to, I don't even know how they put it out, but they put it out because I wasn't watching because I was too scared. To yeah. Run, run yeah, you were away. buying new shoes. I was buying new shoes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, um, like two people did have to go to the hospital, so they had to Ugh. be brought back to the, to the main city, which... They survive, but they were they were burned, uh, and yeah, it's crazy. And it's like, I'm hoping that the safety measures are better now, <laughs> ten years later than they were ten years ago. Cause... Yeah, the way you describe that reminds me of like a news anchor or something. There's like, so I was wearing rock, socks and sandals. Two people died. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah. a sudden change in tone. <laughs> <laughs> But what what a, what an adventure! Yeah, yeah, wow, that is an experience. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. So was that probably the most dramatic thing when you were on that trip? Oh no, there was another dramatic thing that happened. Yes. <laughs> where, um, my like same same area where we're going to uh, we were going to the the place where we have to get into the tour to go to Solarde Uni. I don't remember the the name of the town, but we were going from La Paz to the city and it's not even a city, it's like a small town. And I guess like, I remember we're on this bus with a bunch of other people. And at one point this truck goes by and hits the side of the bus and just speeds off. And we didn't know what had happened, but when we actually went for like a pit stop, we had seen that they took the entire like mirror off and then the whole front window shattered as well. And it's like, I can imagine that that probably comes out of the salary of whoever's driving the bus, but they actually managed to catch up to the truck driver at some point. And they, like, we all watched this happen. They got out and they, like, dragged the truck driver out and they started beating him up. And we're all just on the bus. We're like, oh, my God, like... Do we do something? <laughs> oh, my like, God. Yeah, it was just, oh, my God. I've just, I've never experienced wow. things like that. And um, eventually, uh, people from businesses nearby came and, like, broke up the fight. But we're just like, holy shit. And it's like, I can imagine, yeah, like, as a bus driver, you're now driving for like, 14 hours without a window. <laughs> and yeah. wow. it probably comes out of their salary, right? Because... Like, yeah, anyway, that happens. And then also, I remember uh, my sister and I, we were, we were going back from Bolivia into Peru. And it's just like, <laughs> like things just don't operate like they do in Canada or even in Asia. Like, I've traveled Asia extensively, and it's just like, it's a different world in South America. Uh, but again, this is 10 years ago. And I remember, like, we took this small bus, and then we get close to the border of Peru and then they just stop the bus and throw everyone's bags on the floor and we're like what oh. <laughs> what and then they they just like point to Peru basically and it's the middle of the night and my sister and I were like okay so then me and like all these other foreigners were just like okay like I guess we'll just follow along with the locals cuz they just started walking so we just put our bags on and like walk to Peru <laughs> So it's pretty oh much they just took you to like the border and they're like, there's Peru. Yeah, pretty and much. And then we there. just had to walk. And then you're walking over for a while at night and then you get to the other side uh, where they actually, you know, process your passport and everything. But it just, it, it felt weird. It felt like you were sneaking into the country and mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of explanation as to what happened. And they, when you book the bus, they also don't tell you that they're just going to bring you to the border and you have to walk the remainder of the time. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, why? This is a very philosophical question, but why is crossing hold the on, border? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Let yeah. Me put on my glasses for this. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait, me too. <laughs> Ask the question again. <laughs> why is crossing the border so stressful? 
You know, I think crossing lap. Because there is one. That's why. Because there's a border and it's dividing us unnecessarily. That's true. Yeah. But I think I think crossing uh I think crossing borders at airports isn't stressful. That's true. But land borders are really stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's totally true. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, cuz um so I'm dual citizen, Canadian and American, and even then walking across the border or driving across the border is such an ordeal. Yes. Because um it's just this idea that they explained to me where they were just like anytime you cross a border for visiting, there's a time limit on you. So we need to know like what you came in with and what you're leaving with. So if, like just as a random example, crossing the border with a car, like if I'm driving the car, is such a conundrum because if I'm traveling as an American, I could drive the car into Canada, visit, I mean, this is, you know, in the great before, um, into Canada, visit for like a week or whatever, and then I have to bring the car back. I cannot cross the border as a Canadian driving an American car because then I have to pay taxes and I have to like go through that whole process. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to now, I'm gonna be moving back into um, Canada, Canada, that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom has to drive the American car that's getting me into the country. I'm taking all my belongings, but she has to drive the car back because of how insane it is with okay. like quarantines and like um, who is allowed to drive the car and all of this stuff. And I'm just like, man, even with a Nexus and like supposedly more easy crossing between the borders, it's just it's, it's just not. always something. Yeah, I I have. A bit of a theory to throw at the land versus air border, if you were to call it that. Mm -hmm. I feel that there's more history and scrutiny and fear around land borders. Yeah. Whereas, like, the possessions you bring with you are much more scrutinized. There's much more fear around, like, bringing substances with you in that yeah. compared to going on an airplane. I think also there's almost, like, a weird greater exertion of power at land borders where it's up to that guard to just be, like, yay or nay. You come in or you go out. Whereas I feel like air guards, um, even though they have the same power... I feel like there's less scrutiny because they know you're separated for a lot of your possessions. It's thrown into this, you know, like into the cargo that's, you know, gone through an x-ray machine and analyzed and all that. So I just, I think it's more like they just want to grill you on like, do you know why you're going as opposed to whether or not you get in? Because I, mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever seen a person been turned away at the air border. Air border. It, it's only been the land border that I've ever seen it happen or people get pulled aside. Now I've been pulled aside once on air borders, but I was never turned away. I've never been turned away. I get pulled aside all the time at air borders, but that's because of... Person of color. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, <laughs> this is going to get dark. Sorry, David. I dated a pedophile many years ago. Um, oh, I didn't, I'm sorry to hear I didn't know he God. was. It's, it's okay. I didn't know he was. Anyway, there was like a police investigation. And then because I was in a relationship with this person, I think there's something on my file. So I <sighs> always get pulled at borders and they always search my stuff. Dang. Yeah. yeah. But, so I just I'm always push, fake an extra time. <laughs> I'm going to push us to our next question to be on time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Renee. Yes. How do you think travel will be different once the majority of the population is vaccinated? Hmm. So I actually did have a think on this question beforehand. So I think it's not so much around the vaccination that will be the thing that makes travel different. I actually think it's just the experience of the pandemic where mm. I think collectively humanity has taken this year as kind of a whether they wanted to or not you had to look into yourself and kind mm -hmm. of do a lot of self-work because it was a hard year and I think for a lot of people their their decision to travel will have a different intention behind it moving forward as opposed to like I'm gonna go to Cancun and get wasted and just like party it's more like I'm gonna travel because life is like anything can happen in life and I want to see the world before I can't or I want to experience things because you know I've spent this year at home doing all this self-reflection so I think that's how travel is going to change where people will travel with more intentionality and like yeah. do it for yeah. reasons other than just like partying and you know going to a resort or something like that yeah I hope so yeah. gosh gosh if 
<laughs> if the general public was just like 25% more self-aware after 2020, mm -hmm. I think we would be on like a pretty good, <laughs> pretty good track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and I think that like things such as like the, just the sanit sanit sanitization processes, the um, awareness like that we're sort of talking about, like, you know, the intention of where you're traveling and what you're doing there and why you're there uh, is going to be a little bit more precious. I mm -hmm. think that will eventually go away, though. I think things will normalize again. But at least immediately after the vaccination period, there's going to be definitely a lot more like I need to be selective about what I'm doing yes. and I need to be smarter about it because if it's not the person who's doing it because you're still going to have the odd person like let's go to Cancun and get wasted yeah. I've been waiting yeah. a year for this it's going to be the people they're dealing with it's going to be the resort they go to it's going to be the airline they deal with that are going to be like okay if you want to do this let's make sure you've been vaccinated like yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if those passports for vaccination become a thing mm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. or that it's just more like they're going to end up at the Cancun destination they go to and they're gonna be like okay but still even though you're vaccinated we're only allowing 20 people into the pool you know like i think there's still going to be a process of like just regulation and maintenance almost out of fear and paranoia until it releases like a year two three years later i don't know yeah i mean i think also um it just certain behaviors like wearing masks and having hand sanitizer everywhere becomes normalized so it's like you know, my family were were from asia so it's like sars was a thing when i was in high school and going to asia subsequently it's just it's really normalized for people to wear masks and it's normalized for people to like have hand sanitizer in all places of establishment so i think in that regard like there will probably be measures uh, when we're traveling and people are able to go again to try to mitigate any potential pandemic effects, but that will also trickle away as well as more people are vaccinated. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and I actually am glad for that. I really hope that sticks. I love that those new standards. I always thought that was very impressive when I travel in Asia and that was never in North America. You know, people are like full on just like yeah it was just like they would they would just sneeze into your mouth <laughs> they'd be like hey i'm sick open your mouth <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. how bad we were uh, oh my gosh i mean i still like i just have a visceral reaction when somebody like coughs or sneezes right into their hand i'm just like you literally just put on death gloves <laughs> like <laughs> you're just smearing it everywhere death gloves. oh death gloves. that's so rough what Final is question. the yeah, what is the most queer event you've encountered while traveling? <laughs> um, so when I was in New York, uh, probably, I've been to New York many times, but this was one of the times when I was, I think I was like in my early 20s, and I, I went to school in Ontario, so it was, you could literally get a $1 Greyhound to New York if you booked it in advance. So my friend and I wow. took a $1 <laughs> Greyhound to New York, and we didn't know that it was Pride. <laughs> Oh, and, and we just like left our um, hotel and then we were walking. We're like, what is happening? And it was just like all of these uh, just like drag queens and just like you can imagine pride in New York City is pretty insane. So we had no idea that it was happening. We're like, I think it's pride. And then again, smartphones didn't exist. So it's not like we could look it up quickly. Um, yeah, that was the most queer event I ever encountered. And it was it was so amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I want to share a quick one that I went through. Um, mm. I don't know if it's the queerest per se because I've been to like sex clubs, but <laughs> <laughs> um, the one of the the most iconic for me was when I went to Ireland. I think this was in Belfast or Dublin. I can't remember which. I was in either Dublin or Belfast, but in Ireland, and stayed in a hostel, and it was like one of those you know, eight people to the room kind of hostels. I was traveling with two other people. And there was these two kind of like, I don't know, just like seemed positive but nice, sort of fairly normal um, Irish men who like stayed at the hostel. And I was kind of like, oh, that's a little odd because like you're clearly from Ireland, but why would you be staying in a hostel? And, but they had these massive suitcases with them. And when they came in, they opened it up and all came out the wigs and the dresses <laughs> and the heels and all this stuff. And I was just like, oh. And they were coming up for a special like drag event thing. Uh, and one of them was performing. 
And so they were just the most lovely, amazing people. They went from like really straight laced to suddenly super camp, especially as I put on their like outfits and they were just like, they befriended us. They're like, oh, we're going to take you out to our show. You're going to have the best time. And so like we were getting ready, like North Americans, like ready for 11 o'clock to go to the club. (laughs) But they were like, "Uh, yeah, like we're not even going to like head out the door till like 1 a.m. Right. Because in Europe, like you go to clubs way later and stay out later. So like we then we and we were jet lagged already, but we went with them. We went to their venue and we didn't even go to see their show because we had gone to a different drag show earlier with them mm. where they wanted to pre-drink and get ready. And so we were there and we were partying and having a good time. But we were there by like, till like I think 3 a.m. And we were like, we're dead. We can't go. They're like, oh, no, we're going to go to our place now. you got to go see our show. And they're like, da, da, da. And they were just like, totally talk is up. We were like, we're sorry. We're so dead. We had just gotten into Ireland. So like we went back to the hostel and they continued on, went to their show. <sighs> Wake up five six in the morning something like that probably more like six in the morning hear this like just like knocking on the door like like not knocking almost like trying to get it open like rattling of the door and stuff like that and i was just like oh god who like is it the landlord or whatever the hostel and like all you hear is like shut up you're waking them up don't you're like did you leave your fucking key you left your fucking key <laughs> and then we were just like what the f-? and they were just like arguing with each other and they were like comical it was just like such a like slapstick comedy thing uh, i was like oh god they locked themselves out open up the door and down the hallway they had undressed themselves from the beginning of the hall down to the door there's like beads heels, and like glitter. heels and all the shit because they were like undressing as they went and then they were trying to get through and they couldn't and they would like collapse like out on the ground they're like oh Oh, sorry, we didn't mean to wake you. And we're like, all right, just come on in. And they're like, they're like, don't worry, we won't put on a light. You won't hear us. We'll be as quiet as a mouse. And so, so like, it was just so stupid because they're like, they wanted to finish undressing, get ready for bed in the dark, so as not to disturb us. But they couldn't see anything. So we go into bed. We're lying in our like hostel bed, and it's the funniest thing because they're trying to be quiet, but they're like being loud about being quiet. Yeah. And they're like, Shh. Shut up, you stupid cow. You're waking them up. No, you're all waking them up. <laughs> like, and they're just going back and forth. They were blitzed. And eventually, they were just like, they just went to bed. And it was the funniest thing. It was just like 20 minutes to go to sleep. Because they're falling over everything. Oh, I would have loved to see that. So good. So good. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Shall we Let's. close with a game? Let's. Let's shall. Please introduce it, David. We have now entered the segment of the show (laughs) where we play a game uh, improvised. That's my segue. (laughs) Thanks. Segway Tron 2000. (laughs) You are welcome. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay, so uh, the game that we're going to play is Foley Artist. So what's going to happen is Robert and I are going to do uh, characters, uh, two characters in a very open scene, and Renee is going to provide sound effects. Now, she's allowed to use anything in the room. She's allowed to use her voice and her mouth, um, and we will challenge her not to use any words, but if she uses words, it's fine. There's no winning. There's no losing. (laughs) Okay, do we have any questions before we get started? I'm just gonna look for and ask for. I think I'm Great. good. <laughs> <laughs> ask for, David? Then the ask for is vigorous. Vigorous. <laughs> or okay. the, the word, the ask for is the question. The word of inspiration is vigorous. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway. Okay, okay. so okay. scene in three, two, one. The seas were large, shifting, and full of anger. I hate being in the ocean. There was Clement, stuck on his small dinghy in the middle of a storm, and he was not happy. Hello? Can somebody help me? In the distance, you could hear the boy, the bell of the boy that was ringing, indicating to Clement that he was close to land. Can somebody tell me if I'm close to the shore? Clement wasn't very intelligent because the narrator already told him he was close to land, but he insisted on inquiring into the Is there the any human out there? Woo! Uh-oh. And there, in the return from the wind, 
was a voice. A voice maybe of a human or maybe of something else. Is that a ghost? I'm very gamey. Don't eat me. <laughs> Clement lived a life that was very nomadic, so he had very thin, stringy meat upon his bones, and he was always concerned about being eaten by a wild ghost. Ooh. Great spirit. If if I have if I have been bad in my life, I I, I hope I don't get punished now. Ooh. I just want to get back home. My cruise Ooh. went so badly. I'm stranded on a dinghy. And the ghost formed before Clement as the wind came together and the condensation formed a face there before him, right in front of his dinghy. Ah! Ah! What is that? Do I know Clement you? Clement threw himself back, clutching his ah! chest. God, you look like you look like my great aunt Sybil. And it was, for great aunt Sybil was there, forming from the netherworld to bring a lesson to Clement, a lesson to prevent him from ruining his life. David, David. What? Fine, this was man. a real, true family member, you could tell, because the aunt knew his real name and pronunciation. What do you want in, Sybil? Oh. Find land. Oh, okay. I'll do that. <laughs> and so he took that sage advice and went forward to find the land towards the dinghy and to his ding, destiny. Ding, 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 Goodbye, ding, dinghy. Ding, ding. Wait, this entire time, I thought I was on a buoy. But this is a dinghy. I have a paddle. Here I go. And he grabbed the paddle and he placed it in the water and stroked towards freedom. Let's end that there. Oh. He also stroked with the paddle. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the story of Clement David Attenborough, who later became David Attenborough, <laughs> the famous BBC voiceover artist. <laughs> good game, good game, good game. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. I used my voice. I didn't know how not to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I was, good with your mouth, Renee. I know I, I was am. Trying to, I was trying to pressure Robert. I was trying to pressure Robert into joining me as a human character, but he insisted. Yeah, I, I stayed on the top level narration. <laughs> Enjoy uh, the wonderful. Top. This was so fun. I could do this for hours. Mm -hmm. um, now we are coming to the close of the show. Renee, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for I having me. I was wondering if you had any any closing thoughts or any standout thought uh, from our conversation that you might take away with you after this. Hmm. I'm, I'm thinking more around like the the race and economy thing and wanting to like dig into that more. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think I need to put on my glasses. And then yeah. do some more reading before I you know, can I don't form have glasses. intelligent I just have... thoughts of it. You just have a glass. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Robert? For me, um, I just found it very insightful in terms of when we kind of talked a bit about like origins of name and the impact of being like multiracial or just you know people of color during travel and that. I think there's a lot of interesting things that obviously uh, I don't face that people who are people of color do face. And mm. so that's always very refreshing to me and a humbling reminder. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, definitely a theme of the episode was just, like, you know, travel is super fun and, like, more people should do it. Um, mm -hmm. Because not only, like, will you have fun as a person, but, like, you start to just think bigger picture <laughs> about, like, where you come from and, like, how much possibility there is in the world. Yeah. I think also just it changes who you are as a person and yeah well how could it not yeah. you lost your sandals in a burning building <laughs> and i told some and random bolivian woman that there's hell <laughs> hell just broke loose hell just broke loose <laughs> by the way end of the world might want to you know yeah. take care of yourself <laughs> oh. mm. that's my timer who's oh oh okay um excellent so uh, I want to thank you one more time, Renee. Thank you thank so much you. for coming on. Uh, you have been listening to people have been. Li this is for the audience now, not for Renee. You've been listening to Tissues of the Day. Uh, stay wet, Internet.
I was, I was wondering if Robert was going to say. Oh, do you want me to add on to that? Yeah, no, totally. Uh, I just want to say, um, Renee, no, no, if there's... Wait, wait. Oh, okay. Because fucker. Because in the in the previous episode we did uh, stay wet internet and then Robert did soaking. Oh, <laughs> so I yeah, I forgot. Was, I thought oh, he no. was gonna do that. Oh no. <laughs> you want to do it again? We can do a second um, take. No, it's gone. Yeah. It's in the box now, in the black box of the computer. Um, You can follow us at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. Uh, Renee, do you want people to follow you anywhere? You can follow me on Instagram at DisasterClown, which is my clown name. Lovely. Oh, do you do clown work on uh, like video? Uh, no, I, I okay. want to do more clown work. I'm just, uh, I did some, cl- I've done some clowning workshops and then disaster clown was my given clown name after that one workshop I did because I am a disaster when I clown. <laughs> so. Oh, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you folks so much for listening and, uh, we hope to see you next time. Take thank care. Thank you. Thank you.